So hey guys, today I'll be sharing the top five apps that I use on a day-to-day -day basis on my MacBook as a software engineer, which are helping me indeed to become a productive as well as a fast programmer. So the number one app is Notion. And when Notion reached out to me that they want to sponsor this video, I was like, wow, this is the app that I use every single day from the last one year since when I was a student or as a software engineer or as a YouTuber as well. So I cannot even think of a day that I have not used this app. So a common example could be whenever we go for groceries as well, we have a common shared workspace where we keep on adding the groceries or the stuff we need to buy for each other because only one or two person goes for groceries and there's a common list for it. Anyways, now talking about the software engineering aspect of Notion. So this is engineering wiki page which I have created. So whenever you join a new company or a new team, you are loaded up with so much of information and it's so hard to grasp and organize. It's so much, it, it was so much scattered in the beginning, but now I finally organized it. So for example, the first meeting that happened when I joined, I was, it was stored here getting started. So they talked about which UI structure or architecture we are using in Android or iOS and who made the app, how old is the app or how many lines of code are codes, how many lines of uh, code is there, for example, 1 million, 1 billion, whatever it is. So I currently have a personal pro membership of Notion. And since I have a student status, which is absolutely free for me. And also if you will use the link in the description below, you will be able to create a free account on Notion easily. So the most important note over here is the useful commands because every Android developer knows that Android Studio is a little bit buggy. So you have to sometimes clear the caches or even sometimes the ADV gives problem, you know, how to run the emulator. So that's why we use these commands time to time and also outside there is a documentation because Android has different documentation or guidelines, the colors you have to use, the sizes. So all these are stored in different section of this workspace. So it's just so organized and so amazing to see and also the testing aspect of app. So once you build the app, once you, once you, once you complete a task, you have to test as well. So there are different guidelines for all of it. And now if you want to create your own template, all you have to do is go to template section and you can pick in the engineering section, you can pick whatever notes you want to take. For example, uh, to do has this section and engineering wiki has this section, which is currently I'm using. And there are so many templates which are very, very useful. Now moving on the next notes I have is to do today because I want to spend the minimum amount of time to make the goals for today itself. So I just write here and later on, I move it to uh, the section called to do. So in this to do section, for example, like I have some UI changes to be done. So currently I'm working on ticket to ticket 4288, which is in progress. After completing it, I'll make it to complete it. And we also have Jira, which I cannot show you because that's private. In that you also have, you know, task in code review or in QA. So there are so many, so many aspects of software engineering. And for that Kanban board. So this board is called Kanban board, which is very helpful. So you can easily move uh, for the things that you haven't started here and this, the stuff that you are currently doing in progress. And indeed I can add a lot of filters to these tasks as well. For example, I can see them based on the priority. For example, these tasks have much higher priority as compared to other tasks. Also, I can look at them as a database. So if I click on all tasks, these will look like they are in an Excel sheet or a database. Also, I can see them in a calendar based on the due dates. I actually haven't set up any deadlines. So they look like that they are all due on, on 9th of February. But anyways, if I want to add a new task, so what I every day do is I go to all tasks section and grab something from due today. So whatever that comes into my mind, hey, this is this is something I want to do today or immediately or ASAP. I just add things and it has a fire logo because it fire logo just tells me that it is important. So I'll grab something from here and then go to the section of to do and then paste it here. So it was uh, I can just paste it here or I can just type it again. So it will be Z axing versus Z bar. This is a task that I'm still working on. I'll just add a stat status in progress. And then it is of course assigned to me and it has a higher priority or I think this has medium priority and I can add a due date. So it is really easy to organize now. And it, then I can, and after adding the task, I can also add more information about it. For example, this is an Android task and what are the steps I need to do to reproduce this bug. So all these can be written inside and I can finally then view it as a Kanban board and I can see that it is 
right uh, and then i have to move it to status again and it is right in progress here so makes things very organized and i can see it on my mobile phone on my ipad and it makes the whole experience very intuitive now moving on with the next aspect of notion which is text editor so earlier i used to use sublime but now since I have so much information to write and some more details to write about the code. For example, here I have pasted some of the code for on button click listener of an Android button. And when I was new to Lambda expressions, I wrote both of these expressions and I can easily refer them here. I can write more notes about a code snippet and I can say that this code snippet is for on button click listener so that I remember and easy to find and search around and also for example if I want to paste a code snippet from a text editor for example if I go to my Android studio now and I'll just grab any kind of code so let's go to questions activity and if there's something that I think is important I should memorize I can just copy and paste and then go to notion and paste it here. Now I can view this code as a plain text. I can label the language of this code snippet. So this is again, Java, JavaScript. I can just label it and it will look much beautiful. And I can write more notes, how to open a fragment in Android and save it. So these code snippets are pretty easy, but when it gets complicated, it is important to write notes. And whenever I'm in a meeting, so talking about the meeting notes. So today I had two meetings. One was dev exchange and the other was standups. So standups is pretty much every day in a scrum environment. So talking about the scrum uh, standups meeting, I just gave my update. I cannot show you the actual meeting notes, but I can just tell you what you what's usually in the standup meeting notes. And then talking about the dev exchange meeting in which we exchange our doubts and what problems we are facing and how we can fix by exchanging views with another developer. And other than that, the most important was bug report meeting and you can pick a bug from that meeting. So I, I'm not showing you the actual notes, but I hope you get the idea. And also there's a section of important documents. So when I'm traveling, I can have my resume, I-20 visa passport saved. I can also keep it in Google Drive as well, but here it is organized and it is just one click away and it's very accessible. And also talking about the job application. So when I was applying for jobs so all of the information was here so let me first of all view it as a database so all the applications are here so i remember uh, when i applied to like i think hundreds or thousands of companies you can give them status applied followed up ready to apply applied and sometimes you need different resume for a particular job application for example product management internship will have a different resume saved here and software engineering will have different resume and they have a job posting link so you can easily track and go to their link by clicking here and yes even the job applications page can be seen as a kanban board so you can see even the apple headquarters and notion headquarters here so it's really beautiful and easier to observe things and to manage so now talking about the next app that i use pretty much every day is oh my zish and i also talked about this app in my day in life video as well and uh, to show you how useful it is i just uninstalled it and this is how my terminal used to look before and this is how it looks now. So with the help of Omazish, if I go to any of my Git repository for version version tracking, so let's say I open my GitHub folder and go to the project CS Music. So this is an Android app which we created in Hack ATL, I think, using augmented reality. So anyways, uh, so the moment I open the app, it already shows me that it is currently in master branch. So let me back out and go to a different project. So let's go to uh, the app called blind support. So this was in hack GSU and it shows that it is in a branch called task 01 Hanur machine learning. So this is a branch for me. So task was number one for me and the task was of machine learning and I can even use GitHub desktop for it. So for example, here, if I go to the repository blind support, it shows that this is the branch, but I'm so much used to terminal. I think the real developer or not, I mean, I'm not saying that if you're using, if you're not using terminal, you're not a real developer, but for me personally, it is faster to use the terminal. And now if I want to switch back to master branch, then I'll just do git check out master and Omar Zish tells me in bold that I'm currently on master branch and not just for Git or for Git operation general. Also, this makes the terminal look much beautiful. For example, if I, even if I just open documents folder documents is in blue color, so things become easier to read and understand. Now let's talk about the next app, which is light chart. So generally in your MacBook, if you want to take screenshot, all you have to do is command shift four 
to take a screenshot of the entire screen or command shift five. So command shift four actually allows you to select and take a screenshot and, and it comes to the bottom right corner, but I don't really like it that much. My favorite app for light shot is actually light shot. So all I have to do is command shift nine. So then I can select a particular area and then draw on it immediately. So it is a little bit faster to draw. I can select this pencil tool on the left and then start drawing. And if I'm on a meeting or a Skype call or a Teams call or Slack call, I can draw things and explain really easy. So I can maybe say that uh, this is in GitHub a fetch button or this is uh, master branch so things become really easy to draw and this is m1 macbook so light shot is a little bit buggy so you can see weird chips but on intel macbook light shot works completely fine now anyways let's move on with the next app this is my favorite in android studio i wish i had known about this app before so this is called layout inspector in android studio i think not a lot of new android developers know about it so you should know so let's say that i'm running an app in my M1 MacBook and luckily uh, the support for Android emulator in M1 MacBook is there. There's a special M1 MacBook or M1 chip emulator which I have installed. So I'm just running the app. It is a little bit slow, but let's see if it runs uh, battery low. Come on, come on. So the app is still running. Yeah, so okay. So app is here. Where's the app? Come on. I think the emulator has to be run separately. So let me go back to my emulator. I'd run that first. So Android emulator, launch it. Yeah. It couldn't detect ADB anyways. No worries. So once I have installed the app, I can open layout inspector and then choose. Okay, so layout inspector is being installed, I think. Anyways, uh, one, after installing the layout inspector, or after opening it from the bottom corner, I can see live updates and I can tap on a UI element. For example, this is the button and I can find the ID of it. So for example, when you are in a big project, you don't know what's the ID in the UI. So for example, I can find that the ID of this button is BT start quiz. I can see the dimensions of it. The X is 76 dp, width is 100 dp, height is 48 dp. So it makes debugging really, really easy. And if I go to the next page in my app, so let's click on start quiz and then I tap on, let's let it refresh. Yeah, it has refreshed and I can see the other UI elements. I can see the ID of all these elements. I can see the dimensions of them. I can see if the color or the text, for example, here the text is uh, D. So if I want to debug that if the text is displayed correctly as D or not, so I can debug easily with layout inspector and also the next button. So if you want to be fast at Android development and fast at finding the IDs or the UI debugging, Layout Inspector is must you should have in your Android Studio. It is already there, but you should you should know how to open it. And now the next app is, which is already on Windows, but luckily or unluckily not on Mac. So that's why I've bought better snap tool on MacBook. So I get all the Windows features, for example, drag and drop to the top will stretch it, stretch the entire window from all sides. If I drag and drop it to the right section, it'll stretch the window on the right corner. Similarly on bottom left, because I use a monitor, so uh, it becomes easier to stretch things on left monitor, right monitor, and it's just amazing. But remember that on MacBook Air M1, you can only connect it to one monitor. So that's why I have only one monitor here. Anyways, now one most important app or a feature that can help you in becoming a productive software engineer is the do not disturb mode. So whenever I'm in the zone of programming, I just tap on this do not disturb mode as well as on my MacBook, as well as on my phone and then get into the zone. I barely, when, when I had like, you know, when it was a release period, I was on do not disturb pretty much all the time. And you can even see my stats. Uh, like I spent barely five, 10 minutes on YouTube, Instagram and all these apps when it was a release period. But now I spend more time on Instagram because I obviously have to interact with you. But I'm just telling you when, when you get into the zone of programming, you just feel like that you should have no distractions, phone and do not disturb and laptop and do not disturb. Sometimes even off, but I think do not disturb, get things done easily for me. So that's the key to become a productive 
and a smart software engineer. At home, it is really hard to be productive, but by just waking up and taking a shower every day and wearing shoes, just make me feel that I'm in office and I stay productive. So these are the five apps. And I think these have become very indispensable part of me as a software engineer. So I use them every day. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.